This is Philly Drone Tech with Tom Brunt. Sponsorship provided by AWeber.com, GetFlywheel.com, and Wistia.com. Hello there, folks. Welcome to another episode of Philly Drone Tech here on uh, phillytech.org Netcast Network. I'm Tom Brunt, and uh, I will be bringing you news and information and all sorts of good stuff about the quadcopter multi-rotor community, also known as drones. So let's get started for uh, this episode. Uh, first story I have for you actually happened back in the uh, summer. Um, uh, an 82-year-old man with dementia went missing uh, in uh, deep, deep woods, uh, 200 acres uh, by his house. Uh, police and rescue searched for him for three days, could not find him, uh, by foot, even by helicopter. Uh, then comes along an amateur drone pilot with a drone with a camera. Uh, he decided to help out, and guess what? Found the man. Found the man alive. Uh, dehydrated, but otherwise healthy. Uh, found him with the drone in 20 minutes. That's why I said 20 minutes, where three days proved nothing. Uh, this, this was fantastic news. Uh, it's unfortunate that the FAA is still dragging their feet on allowing this um, kind of um, search and rescue. Uh, they still forbid it. Uh, in fact, uh, this brings me to my second story of a company called Texas EquiSearch. Uh, they are a search and rescue nonprofit that for years have been uh, using uh, various techniques for finding people uh, alive and deceased. Um, they have been at the forefront of using drones for some of the rescue and in fact they have recovered 11 bodies uh, that otherwise could not have been found uh, using drone technology. They have been sent cease and desist orders by the FAA to stop using uh, the drones. Um, they recently took them to court and, fortunately for them, uh, the court sided with Texas EquiSearch. So they are allowed to still use their drones uh, despite the FAA's uh, disapproval of it. Uh, hopefully this will help further push the FAA into um, providing regulation and a set of rules because let's face it, uh, if these things are able to help save people, let's use them. Let's not wait for regulation or wait for, uh, wait, wait for politics. Let's just use them. Uh, they've already proven uh, very helpful in finding a number of people. So, let's move on to the next uh, topic. Um, we're gonna do a product demo. Uh, one of my, if you watched uh, last episode, I introduced my family of three drones uh, in order of big, middle, and small, Humpty D, Little Buddy, and Tiny Tim. So this month, uh, we're going to look at uh, Little Buddy. Uh, this is my, uh, this is him. Uh, you see, like the little face I put on him. Uh, this is a SEMA X5C. Uh, it retails uh, for between 53 and $70. Uh, you can get this on Amazon or on eBay stores uh, right now. Um, it's a, what I call a great little starter drone I'm um, finding. Uh, in fact, I, I, started my, uh, I started my quad uh, copter flying with the big DJI Phantom. And I only wish that I knew about this back before then. And I would have purchased this first uh, because since it flies a little more manual than the Phantom, uh, you get to hone a little more, a uh, little more of a skill set, and you're flying around a sixty-dollar drone, not a, not a six hundred-dollar drone. So uh, let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, this, uh, when I mentioned about the DJI Phantom, this I bought this because it looks very DJI Phantom-esque. Um, uh, you see, it's got the propeller guards. Uh, I do like 
propeller guards, especially if you're flying indoors. Uh, I kind of like them uh, regardless, because uh, you can have rough landings, and uh, I know with my fan, it will land like that. Instead of landing on your propellers, it's landing on your guards. Uh, this, you can fly indoors. Uh, it flies a lot lower, so you're flying around people and objects. So, and since you're starting on this, you're most likely going to hit things with it. You're going to crash into things with it. So, I highly recommend put on the propeller guards. Uh, it comes with a little 720p camera. Uh, it also takes uh, stills. Uh, it's not the highest quality camera. It's a 720p, uh, 2 megapixel. But what do you want for $60? Uh, the fact that it even has a camera, a little micro SD card. Uh, here, let me turn it on here, and you see it's, uh, it's blinking here. So let me, uh, let me show you the uh, controller. Uh, let's uh, turn on the controller here. And there we go. And actually, I'll bind it to the craft. So I'll lift it up and down. And now, if I were to lift that back up, we'd be flying. So I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to save that for the outdoor demo. But uh, the controller is kind of nice. Uh, it's uh, got a little, uh, little display on there. It mainly just tells you battery and it gives you a position for um, your little trims. Uh, one thing that's kind of nice about it is that uh, although it doesn't have GPS, uh, it, it is able to stay level uh, in, in space. But you have to work to keep it uh, steady. It will kind of want to hover around. But it has trims on the controller, so that if it's moving like this way, you can kind of trim it back a bit. So it kind of tries to help it hover. So. Um, uh, like I said, I like the controller. Uh, it's a pretty good size, uh, pretty good size for you. Uh, there's a button up here that uh, you can uh, do flips with. Um, yes, it does flips. Uh, nice acrobatics. So all four directions, left, right, front, back, it'll flip. Um, uh, it's got this little control here. This, if you put it down, you hear that beep. Now the camera is recording. Uh, that's a nice feature. The only thing I don't like about it is that there's no indicator whether it's recording or not. If you're flying in low light, you can kind of see it flashing red, meaning that it's recording. But uh, usually in the bright sunlight, you can't, with it up in the air, you can't tell that. Um, uh, let me see what else can I tell you about this. Uh, it seems to have a, a distance of about um, 100 to 150 feet, uh, which doesn't seem like much, but uh, you know, it's meant for simple recreational flying. It's good flying out in the field and, and, uh, and all that. Um, say you uh, go out of range. Uh, what does it do? Well, fortunately, it'll turn itself off and drop. Now, it is such a light craft. This thing weighs only ounces, um, not pounds, ounces. So it's in high winds, it kind of almost can take off like a kite uh, if you're not careful. Uh, but one of the things about it being so light is that it's, it's kind of tough to land smoothly because it has so little weight to it. Uh, it takes a lot of skill to really gently bring it down. But it's okay because it, it kind of bounces, not crashes. Um, it's, it's, I've found this thing to be very durable. It can do all sorts of rough landings. I, I recommend over like a grass field is nice. But uh, you just pick it up, brush the leaves out of the little motors and fly it again. So um, with that, uh, let's, uh, I did a little demo taking it outside and you can see it, uh, see how it flies. So let's, uh, let's go uh, fly it. We'll uh, get it going. It's a little breezy today, uh, so I will be fighting it a little bit, uh, but because uh, it's a very light craft, but uh, let's see what we get. Here we go. See, the controls are very, I think they're kind of a little fine and touchy. A little bit getting used to from the Phantom. Uh, but again, I'm only used to flying the Phantom. The Phantom is a much bigger and weightier craft than this. This is like, uh, I mean, this thing weighs only ounces. So it's uh, taking a little bit for me to get kind of control over it. But uh, one of the fun things it does is uh, flips. 
So here, let me take it up in the air. And let's have some fun. There we go. Nice little flip. And let's take it forward. Bring it down a little bit. You see it's fighting in the wind pretty good. But let's, uh, let's take it forward a bit. There we go. Now for 60 bucks, you really can't be beat it. It's almost like a no-brainer if you really want to get involved with uh, drones. Uh, this is a great little guy to learn with. Um, the Phantom was my first uh, drone. So I made all my mistakes on that. Now, see, I'm fighting it really good here. A big breeze just picked up. And I'm kind of actually impressed it's working as well as it is. Because like I said, I mean, it, it weighs like a kite. So it flies... It seems like it wants to fly like a kite, too, when the wind picks it up. There we go. It's struggling a little bit. Let's do another flip. And there we go. Double flip. I like it when it does that. The camera isn't the best, of course, but, uh, you know, again, what do you want for $60? But, uh, again, it's still a nice little starter, uh, starter drone to play with. Whoa! There goes the wind again. The trick is kind of playing with it and making it kind of stabilize itself in the air. Because again, it's, it's, it's completely manual craft, so it doesn't have any GPS or any of that to help keep it stable in the wind. So this is where you get to kind of hone some better flying skills. And uh, yeah, wind picked it up again. Alright, let's, uh, let's bring her down. Bring her down for a bit of a landing, and I'll show you one other neat little trick that you can do with it. Let's see. Because it's so light, I find it hard to get, like, really stable landings. That actually wasn't too bad. See how it's good at bouncing? Like I said, I mean, it weighs ounces. It is so light that uh, it's very durable, too. If I, I find that I've crashed this thing in the, in the branches and had it fall on the ground uh, from a good height, and you just... Pick it up, brush it off, brush the leaves out of the little gears in the motors, and you just fly it again. So uh, here's one cool thing that does, and I'm going to do this. And uh, I don't recommend doing this with just any drone, but this one will do it. Here we go. So how I almost missed it there. But, you see how I just kind of threw it. There we go. And I'm starting to lose my orientation, so I'm going to bring her down for a landing. There we go. Now, it is amazing for $60 that it can do all that. Um, let me tell you about some of the accessories that are in here. Uh, I mentioned it's got a little uh, micro uh, SD card for uh, your video and, uh, and pictures. It's only a two gigabyte. Now, although it's using AVI files, uh, you still don't get a lot of excess storage on, on the, this card. And unfortunately, two gigabyte is the max, as I found out. So uh, either get a bunch of two gigabit cards or just be transferring the footage off as uh, soon as you're done uh, shooting. Um, that's included. What else is included, which is kind of nice, is they have a little USB micro SD card reader. So you can just put that right in your computer. You don't need any adapter. And then an SD card reader to, to put in your computer like you normally do. Uh, it has interchangeable batteries. Uh, here, here's one right here. Uh, I do recommend getting more of them. Uh, you get about an average of nine minutes per flight. But, uh, and they take maybe an hour and a half to charge. Uh, here's a little charger. Go a little, again any USB port or phone charger and you charge the battery right up. And what else it gives you? Uh, it gives you an extra set of props. Always have extra sets of props. And uh, even the screwdriver to put on the props and the uh, propeller guards. So uh, there you have it. Uh, there's the SEMA X5C. Like I said, you can find it on eBay you can find it on Amazon. Uh, there's actually two models. There's an X5C, C for camera, and there's an X5 that'll be a little bit cheaper. No camera though. 
So I would definitely just just go for the extra and have fun with the uh, have fun with the camera. Today's show is sponsored by Wistia. Wistia is a video hosting and analytics platform that helps businesses get the most out of online video. We use Wistia here at PhillyTech.org. Flywheel, a managed WordPress hosting platform built specifically for designers and creative agencies and helps thousands of designers across the world launch projects every day. Aweber is local to the Philly region, helping entrepreneurs, agencies, and small businesses connect with their customers through email marketing. Go to aweber.com slash phillytech to find out more. And by Soho Mail, professional, low-cost email with business class features and security. What you are looking at right now is a performance art piece uh, called Sparked. Uh, it's from the folks at Cirque du Soleil. What's uh, going on underneath those uh, flying lampshades, uh, no CGI was uh, involved in this. That is all actual real. Uh, those are uh, quadcopters inside those. Uh, you can see some fantastic piloting uh, going on in this piece. And uh, it's a... Um, a fine example of uh, drones as performance art. I definitely plan on bringing you more uh, fantastic uh, uses of drones in, uh, in, in the arts. Um, so there you have it for another episode. Uh, hope you uh, found it pretty informative and uh, hope you'll stick with me for uh, future episodes here on phillytech.org netcast network and if you have any ideas or advice or anything at all uh, for future topics that I can cover here on this uh, on this show uh, drop me a line at uh, drone guy at tebweb.com that's drone guy at tebweb.com see you next time